Okay, so you've come to this video because you're wanting to look at a way of synchronizing some files and folders and things like that. Now, I've literally just come across Free File Sync in the last 10 minutes or so, and it's exactly what I've been looking for for, for a while. Um, usually what I tend to create is like robocopy scripts um, to copy directories and stuff like that. I prefer kind of managing it myself, but Free File Sync seems pretty damn cool. Um, now this video is not affiliated with Free File Sync at all. I recommend if, you, if you're keen and you like it, definitely donate to it. It's a pretty sweet little, um, a little bit of open source um, program that they've written here. So it's free, freefilesync.org. Um, the thing that really got me that I liked was in the tutorial section, they got this real-time sync, uh, and I recommend checking that video out. Basically, that real-time sync is just a, every 10 seconds or whatever interval that you're wanting uh, based on idle times and stuff for it to sync your directories, which is very, very nice. Um, and it shows you how to set that up in there as well, but I'm going to walk you through it, why I'm using it, and um, how I've set it up for me in particular. And this video kind of in relation to the other video that I did about Sandboxy and um, NetBeans, and um, to give a little bit of background of why I'm using Free File Sync, uh, the issue that I've run into is I'm using Sandboxy um, for my um, and I'll bring the Sandboxy up here. I'm using Sandboxy to run NetBeans for my Java development area, um, just so that my Java development and all those kind of uh, JDK or the JDK and all the development kits, all those kind of things are separate from my, from my, uh, my local system in, in some way. It's still on my local system, but it's just not part of everything else. You can check out that video as well. But um, the thing that I've come up with that's a bit of, that was a bit of annoyance is that any projects that I create or work on um, within NetBeans, of course, is in a sandbox environment. So if I choose to save them to my OneDrive, Sandbox is going to be like, well, you know what? It actually, we're not going to save that to your OneDrive. Um, we're actually going to create a sandbox directory of what that OneDrive is. Um, so what I found was that on my other devices, of course, those um, those projects I was working on or testing and playing out with aren't synchronizing to OneDrive because it's saving to a fake sandbox um, uh, location instead, which I'll jump into here and show you um, under users, current, and then my OneDrive directory, my subjects folder, the directories that I've created while being in NetBeans are within here. And this definitely is not a OneDrive directory. So I wanted to just have a real-time sync, essentially, of my NetBeans uh, folder um, and anything that I place in there, I want that to be copied across to my OneDrive. And then what's going to happen is it will synchronize and then, of course, those project files will be available on my laptop, which then I will have another sync going the opposite way back into my laptop sandbox environment. I know it sounds very convoluted and crazy, uh, but it's uh, it's what I want to do at this moment and probably may change at some time as well but uh, but it, it seems to be um, an option um, worth exploring so if we put the two folders side by side um, this is the OneDrive directory the actual physical OneDrive um, location as you can see here uh, and this is my NetBeans directory um, via Sandboxy. So what I've got running in the background is, as you can see down the bottom here, is the real-time sync um, provided by um, Free File Sync. And I'll show you in a second how to create all this. But what this does is it just sits in the background. And if I go ahead and create a new folder in here and call this test, for, for example, give it about 10 seconds because that's the, the interval, the, the, um, the little bit of time that I've specified. Uh, and it should sync across that folder, which is really, really useful. Um, this computer is pretty well on a lot of time. 10 seconds is more than enough. Like if I save something, save a project, put my computer to sleep or in hibernation, it's going to synchronize um, and I'll be on my laptop, which is sweet. So how is this all set up? Well, first of all, download file sync or free file sync. Um, go ahead and open this up and then you'll see a window like this one. And what you want to do here is go to the top bar and choose your directories that you're wanting to sync. 
Um, now I'm doing a two-way sync, so it doesn't matter if I modify things within the Google, sorry, in the OneDrive directory or even in my say my sandboxy directory. Um, it's all going to uh, come across anyway, um, which is perfect. So here, uh, what you do is just browse to your directory. So for instance, let's just say we're going to use learning resources and make sure this is can be either directory for to start with. This is going to be my OneDrive, so let's choose that. And then we're going to say, okay, well, we want to copy learning resources to the sandboxy directory for oops for current OneDrive there and to that one. So that's where we're going to be copying it to. We can do a compare just to see what the differences are. So at the moment we can see that my OneDrive has a whole bunch of files and folders and well, a whole bunch of files um, that haven't been synch synchronized across to say my um, uh, my Sandboxy, which is my other location. Um, and you can actually turn the ones that you don't really want on off, I believe, um, which is pretty useful. There's a whole bunch of things you can explore through here. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and do a test synchronize if you want to to begin with. What I'd recommend doing though is just going ahead, well, don't, don't click off of it, it doesn't help. Uh, but once you've done it, just uh, let me just go and bring that back again. Let's create a new one and go browse. Um, and let's just say, We'll do it the other way this time. Learning resources and subjects, orientated programming and learning resources and do a comparison. So it's the opposite way because I switch the folders around. So once you've done that and, you, and you're happy, you can do a sync. Um, I'd probably just recommend clicking on save and then save uh, this file. It's called an FFS and it's a GUI file. And this is a file specific to the free file sync software and give it a name. So I'd call that, say, um, uh, whatever it is, it's my, uh, what is it, OFX course, and it's my resources, or something, learning resources. And I'd say sandboxy to OneDrive, for, for example, and just save that. And then you'll see it down on the left-hand side here and your configurations available. So you can jump into them and you can run them. Once you've actually saved that, go ahead and save a batch job. Um, and then click on batch job. You can tell it to run minimize. You can do all these kind of things. Batch jobs are really cool because you can just have them on your desktop or in a folder. If you don't want to be doing it um, automatically, you can just have a batch job, double click it, let it go and it's done. So that can be something that you prefer doing and manually running. You can tell the computer to shut down and sleep when you've done it. You can also set up schedules as well. But for me, I'll just go run minimized and ignore any errors. I don't really care about any of that and just go save as. And then I'll save it into my local or wherever I'd like to save it. Um, and it's, it has a different um, file extension called an FFS underscore batch. So go ahead and save that, and that's it. So you can close out a file sync, free file sync, and then if you jump into, where are we? I'll just use this side here. Actually, I'll leave that there. Well, actually, I'll leave it there. Um, free file sync, you've got your batch um, created. And you can, of course, double click, like I said, and that's gonna run that sync, which is great. Uh, but if you're wanting to do the real-time syncing, then go to your start menu and type in real-time sync and launch this. And this is real-time sync. And what you can do is you can just drag across your, um, uh, what's it called, your file, um, the batch, and just drag, drag it in. And what this does is it just copies it in, it will, it will load up the, the directories. And then from here, you can set your idle times and tell it to hide the console. And rather than clicking on start, you can just save out a real-time file. So now you're gonna be left with three different files. But with this real-time file, or this real-time sync file, you can then add that to your startup. And then that's always going to be loaded when your computer loads, which is pretty sweet. Um, so if you're running a couple of real-time things, what you probably wanna be doing is creating a single file sync um, with multiple different directories. So the really nice thing about how this works is it's not just two, two separate directories. You can just go add another directory, 
add another directory, add another directory. And you can keep on adding different folders and they have a different respective pair. So you can be syncing, it could be like, I know 10 different folders within all these different locations with different relative paths and such. And you're creating one simple, simple sync file um, that may be doing some, some real time syncing as well. So that's pretty sweet. And I just wanted to share this really quick video. Um, and uh, I'm going to leave that there for now. But that's pretty well it. And for me, it's it looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that type of um, implementation. And I guess if anyone has any recommendations, suggestions, or thoughts about that, then hit me up. Keen to know. Enjoy this video. Well, hope you have enjoyed this video. <laughs> Give us a like. Uh, if you hate it, let me know in the comments. Cheers.